Hello. Well, today, as I mentioned, we are going to be talking about input devices. I want you to notice that some of the things that I will be covering here, they may be covered by or have been covered by another one of my colleagues, okay? But nevertheless, they're going to be covering those topics from a different perspective. The way that I am going to be mentioning all these things is from the fact that they are all input devices, okay? So let's get started. We'll begin by defining input. So what is input? Input, and I'm going to read this, which you shouldn't do, remember, to put data into the computer for processing, okay? So what we have learned is that when we put the data in, it goes in as data, but whenever we get it out, it comes out as information, okay? So the first thing that you need to know is that when you actually work with input, you are putting data in. So think about that and think of your computer and say how many ways, how many different ways I can give the computer, uh, you know, data, data to process. How, what are the ways? Maybe the most obvious that will come into you will be like, hey, I can type something, right? Or I can click on something. So think about that for a couple seconds before we continue. So let's talk about the input devices. And in here, I'm gonna mention them all like in a sequence, okay? So basically what we're trying to think of is that the input device is a peripheral device, meaning that it is not part of the computer in itself, but it sort of plugs into the computer. It's in the periphery, it's in the outside of the computer, and it's gonna give, you know, it's gonna give data into, it's gonna give input to, of data into your computer. So we have a lot of them. Look at that, keyboards, mouse, and a lot of different things. And what I'm gonna try is that I'm gonna try to cover each one of them. So I will start with the keyboard. And the keyboard, we have the traditional keyboard, which is the one that actually you plug into your desktop. I'm not talking about laptops in here. Then you have the laptop or mobile keyboard, you know, that's a, a little bit more compact, is the one that you have in your laptop. Then we have virtual and we have the thumb keyboard. So this is the thing. We talk about traditional keyboards and they are usually wider, okay? So they have less risk to your hands and to your, uh, you know, your wrist, because you can do, you can have a position, you have a position like this. Whenever you have the keyboard, the, the laptop keyboard, then you tend to use your hands like this. And you see that curve is not good for you. And I will have opportunity to talk to you about that a little bit more. For now, I bought something to show and tell with you. I bought my beloved BlackBerry phone. And why is this BlackBerry phone in here? Well, I no longer use a BlackBerry, but Blackberries are famous for several things. One of them is the keyboard. They have a real hardware keyboard. And, you know, it had the little pointing device in here. I just loved my BlackBerry. But it was a time when it became obsolete to me, for me to use, and I had to, to switch phones. But this was a state of the art kind of thing. It's just great, okay? Fantastic device. Now, uh, the thing is that because people began using this as a means to e for email, they used to do this a lot. And that's where we got the, um, the expression of having the thumb keyboard, okay? Because that's the way it's used. And as a matter of fact, nowadays we call you most of you guys, the thumb generation, because you use your thumbs for many, many things that people my age, and I'm not gonna tell you how old I am, you know, people my age wouldn't use this two fingers, okay? So let's continue. So what else do we have? Well, we have the mouse, and most of you are pretty familiar with this, right? So with mouse, uh, keep in mind that it will uh, transform the signal from analog, like when you're moving around and you're you know, in curves and stuff, into a digital signal that your computer will be able to recognize. It may have one or two buttons. So if you remember, if you wanna think about a one button mouse, you will probably think of an Apple mouse. And for two buttons, we usually think of a PC. 
if we want to do better, we will need to have an ergonomic mouse. And nowadays, we also have multi-touch mice. So how about that ergonomic thing? And as again, you know, eventually I'll talk to you about that. But when we talk about something being ergonomic, it's, it's that it's built for you to use and it fits your anatomy, namely your hand. So if you're using it like this, it fits your hand in a way that it's not gonna hurt you even if you use it, but keep in mind, don't overuse it anyways, right? So it's, um, nowadays we don't just have a mouse like the usual one. We have trackballs, we have different kinds of mice. We have even joystick mi mice, you know, um, that we, you can use like this. So this is a better way for your hand, you know, a better alignment for your hand when you're trying to do something like that. So please look around, make sure that whenever you're looking for a mouse, it's a mouse that you actually feel comfortable using. It's very important. You have the multi-touch ones because instead of having buttons, now you can just touch and you can scroll and you can do things with, you know, as you touch the, the mouse. And that is true for um, Apple mice, you know, the ones that, the wireless ones. So as you can see, you have a bunch of options and they all perform the same thing. They allow you to click in order to enter data into the computer so that it can be transformed into information. Let's continue. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about scanners because that will be covered by William in more detail. But we have the common flatbed scanners and they are called like that because it's just like flat and they look like a bed actually. And they are not just for uh, documents or anything like that. They are not just boring like that. They could get images. They can do many other things, right? So um, as I mentioned, that's for images. now. We have nowadays other things that we scan like barcodes or QR codes. And as I mentioned, you know, William will go over this in a little bit more detail and he's gonna give you some examples, okay? For now, let's move on. So we also have digital cameras and I will go over it just to remind you of the digital camera, but I want you to think of it as an input device, okay? I'm not talking about the camera that is actually how it works or going in detail, but it's just as an input device. And as such, it's in the periphery of the computer, you know, so you can connect it via USB, right? So to the, to the bus, or you can connect it via Bluetooth, or you can have, as an example, you can have a webcam, but that one is still a camera that is in the periphery, you know, it's in the outdoors. Okay, so this camera, I want you to think of it as an input device, okay? We're not talking about, uh, you know, more, in, in more details about how the camera operates or where it stores things or anything like that because we're not looking at it from the perspective of storage, but from the perspective of being input that goes into your computer. And on the same token, let's take a look at something that gamers actually love and that is the joystick. A joystick may have buttons depending on how specialized it is. And of course, you're gonna use it with uh, video games. And for this, you know, my colleague Pete will be talking about joysticks a little bit more. So let's move on. And this is something that we have covered before. We have talked about input via audio and sounds. And for that, you know, we have Siri in our phone and we have, you know, OK Google now and then Google phones wake up. And we have other options like Dragon Dictate, just like William was able to show us, you know, in his demo. Aside from this, we're still moving into other different things, OK? So we did different, uh, the camera, the joystick, but now there is other things. You will think like that's it, but nowadays if you have an Xbox, you realize that it allows you that to, to communicate with the computer and to enter information by just moving, okay? So let's take a look at things that actually see you move. So for movement, for example, we have the Xbox, which you know, captures your movement. And another way to actually get movement and capture it as input, we have fitness bands. And just like that, there is a lot of other wearable technology. 
another way to get um, data into your computer are radio signals that help you know communicate your device with the computer and it will allow you to connect many other devices into your computer. In this case I am talking about radio signals as the way of transmitting the input. As you can see everything that I showed you here is just seen from the input perspective. If I were to elaborate on each one of those things for all of that they are, not just as input devices, I will take a few hours, but I don't intend to do that, okay? So this is it with input. I'll see you around.